Hello, sound scientists. This is Leo from Strange Science Instruments. And this is our F1 stereo low pass filter. So in this video, we're going to go over all the features of this filter. And then we're going to go plug it into the modular synth and listen to what it sounds like. So when we set out to make the stereo low pass filter, the first thing we actually did was take a look at all the different filter topologies that we could get our hands on. And the one we kept coming back to was the transistor ladder design invented by Bob Moog in the mid 60s. We love the sound of it. It's the quintessential synth filter sound and is the one used in the mini Moog. And in the end, that's the one we decided to go with. We, we love the sound. We didn't stop there though. We added a lot of modern touches that we think modern music makers are going to love. And so let me walk you through what those are. First and foremost, this is a stereo filter. So you have two channels and it's almost like getting two modules in one. Now, when the stereo link is in the off position, these two channels operate independently and you can use it as two separate filters. If you're running stereo sounds through them, no problem. Just switch this to the on position. And now the left side is going to control both sides. The right set of controls is ignored when this is in the on position. This is a really useful feature because if you have two separate filters and you want to control them, first you have to match them very precisely, which is time consuming and not fun. And then you need a buffered multiple to get the same CV coming into both sides of your separate filters. But in the case of the F1 stereo low pass filter, we've handled all of that behind the scenes. Just switch this to on and you're good to go. The next modern touch that we think you're going to love is the filter order switch. So when this is set to four, you have a four pole 24 dB per octave filter that self oscillates. This is exactly the same as the one that's found in the mini Moog and it's the one that everybody really seems to love. But let's face it, sometimes this is too much. Sometimes you want a gentler filter. So for example, if you're working with synth strings or synth brass, you actually want a more gentle roll off and you've got that with this filter. Set this to the two position and you end up getting a two pole 12 dB per octave filter with no self oscillation. So it's a much gentler sound. And we didn't want to stop there, so we added a three pole filter in as well. So when you put this in the three position in the middle, you have an 18 dB per octave non self oscillating filter. What I personally love about this is that it sounds a lot like a 24 dB per octave filter, but it doesn't have the self oscillation because you don't always need that self oscillation. And this gives you a 24 dB like sound without the self oscillation. Okay. As far as the knobs go, we have an input gain we called sat or saturation. So in some cases, if you're bringing a sound in, maybe you want to overdrive the filter a little bit to get some analog uh, grunge and then filter it and no problem. You can do that with this. At the bottom here, we have output control. So if you choose to drive the input really hard, you may want to back off the output so that you don't overdrive the next module in your chain. Okay. The opposite of that is true too. Maybe you want a super clean filtered sound, in which case you can back off the input gain and then make up for that by turning the output up a little bit. The cutoff and the resonance controls work as you would expect. They control the filter cutoff and the filter resonance. One thing that we do that not every filter maker does is we actually include a CV control for the resonance as well. So you can control not only cutoff, but also resonance. Finally, we've got this cutoff offset knob. This is a really interesting feature. This knob has a center detent, and when you put it in the 12 o'clock position, it clicks into that position and the two channels, the left and right cutoff are exactly matched on top of each other. Okay. If you turn this clockwise or counterclockwise, you're introducing a deliberate offset into the filter cutoff frequencies. And this can have some really interesting effects in stereo. Uh, if you have resonant peaks, you're basically causing them to get shifted away from each other. And if stereo link mode is engaged and you have a CV coming in, those peaks are moving together as you 
do whatever it is you do. So this can have some really interesting results when you work in either stereo or in dual mono. We are just beginning to scratch the surface of this feature ourselves, but we think musicians are going to get a lot of interesting uses out of it. Before I wrap it up, I just wanted to show you one last kind of interesting feature about this filter that we think you're going to love. It's two separate filters, but you know what? If you take the output of the first filter and connect it to the input of the second filter and you switch on the stereo link feature, you can get some really interesting mono filters out of this as well. When you set this to the two pole position, you end up with a 24 dB per octave non self oscillating filter. Most 24 dB per octave filters tend to be self oscillating, but with this setup, it's not self oscillating. If you want something a little bit more extreme, you can switch to the three pole position and now you have a 36 dB per octave non self oscillating filter. And finally, if you want something really extreme, switch to the four pole and you actually end up getting a 48 dB per octave self oscillating filter. Now, if stereo link is engaged, then you can use cutoff on one channel and just control both filters together. And the cutoff offset knob still works too. So you can get some really interesting and extreme filter sounds out of this filter. So it's a little power tip. You might find this interesting and uh, we hope that users will use this feature to get some really interesting filtered sounds out of their synths. So I want to actually show you how tightly matched the left and right channels of the filter are. So what I'm actually going to do is bring in a square wave from one oscillator and bring it into both channels. And I'm going to turn up the M4 mixer here so that the levels are matched in the left and right. And the pan is set so that each channel is panned hard left and right. Now as I sweep through this, notice how tightly matched the left and right channels are. You notice how the left and right channels are very tightly matched. You can turn the resonance down and do the same test. Turn the resonance down even more. Turn the level down a little bit. So the fact that these two are so tightly matched, this is not easy to achieve in, in analog and it's taken quite a bit of of engineering work to get this, but the result is that if you wanted to use this as a stereo filter after the mixer, as a, as a master filter, there would be no problems because of the tight matching between the, the channels. And this is true regardless of which uh, filter order you're using. Now this is four pole, but if I switch to the three pole, you'll notice the oscillation's completely gone. But the rest of the sound is more or less the same to my ears very similar. If you switch to the two pole, this one's a much gentler sound. You turn the resonance down, you get a nice thick fat sound. Back to the three pole. Turn the resonance up a little bit. And back to the four pole. All right, 
Let's, uh, let's make some music. So what I'm going to do is bring in CV from my micro brute to two oscillators here. And then instead of sending the same oscillator into the left and right channels of the filter, what I'm going to do is actually send separate sounds. And so that should sound like this. I'm going to reduce the panning so it's not so hard left and right. do is turn these down. In the M4 video I explain how to use this as a uh, high-grade VCA. So I'm just going to start a little sequence here and uh, we'll see what we get here. Make some techno. Now remember what I said about the self-oscillation. Sometimes maybe you don't want some self-oscillation. If you switch to the three-pole, yeah. You get almost a four-pole sound without any self-oscillation, which is quite nice, I think. to the two-pole. Very mild sound. And you can turn up the saturation a little bit if you want to get a little bit crunchy. And there you have it, folks. So I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Uh, I hope you've gotten a sense of what the 
F1 stereo low pass filter can do and what it can sound like. And um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. And thanks for checking us out.